Hey, welcome to this episode of the Speedster Rebuild. We're talking floorboards and floorboard risers. As you can see, there are no floorboards in this car at all. You can see the outline here on the, on the body panel of where the old floorboard riser used to be. So here's what's left of the floorboard riser. Uh, it's just the, looks like a two by six, uh, and the other one is non-existent. And we're gonna be replacing the floorboard risers with a steel riser that's gonna bolt in. This has got a wood subframe, so that'll allow us to drill down into the subframe and attach those uh, floorboard risers. Here is the floorboard riser that's left for the other side. Um, it's broken a couple of times in its life. It's been nailed back together again, screwed in place. Um, and I've gone ahead and I prefabbed and cut up all the pieces needed in order to make this guy out of steel. So we're going to be using some uh, light gauge angle iron for the uh, portion where the floorboards are going to be sitting. And then here I've got just a piece of flat, uh, flat iron. It's going to be the uh, riser portion. Okay, with all the pieces laid out, uh, they are going to essentially mount something like this. Got this piece notched out. That's going to allow it to go like that. And this whole piece will uh, get welded together. The replacement floorboard riser you can see that I've actually got this at an angle because the body curves in so this will sit flush up against the firewall so let's go test with this fit this guy in here nice okay cool well uh, let's go ahead and uh, cut out the other pieces and um, get this thing welded up and then we will bolt this in and send it home Perfect. All right. I'm just now gonna go and uh, finish welding both of these brackets up and then um, I'll get them painted and we will bolt them into place. All right, well, I got the floorboard risers in and uh, I'm kind of stuck. So I've got a few minutes before I have anything else to do. And I think I will start laying out gauges. So the last thing that we want to have happen is have this engine overheat. And so we want to be able to monitor that. Uh, many of you are probably familiar with moto meters and those are all well and good. They're of the ear, they look period, but they really don't give you an accurate indication of what your temperature is. So uh, I've been on the lookout for some vintage gauges and that's really hard to do, like really hard to do, because uh, most of that stuff is either all gobbled up or um, just really, really expensive. So uh, if you've ever been to Harbor Freight, they sell like two and a quarter inch um, gauges, and they're really ugly, like really, really ugly. In fact, I think I've got some unmolested gauges around here. Let me look. So here's these uh, Harbor Freight gauges. They, they, they're nice because they're black bezel, uh, but they have ugly, ugly orange uh, markers on them. And so they're very cheap. Like you can buy that three pack of gauges for like $14 compared to like a set of vintage gauges where you're paying $150 a gauge. Uh, so I thought, well, shoot, I'll just try this and see what I can come up with. And uh, Here's what I've done is I've taken the Harbor Freight gauges and I tore them all apart. They're crimped on the inside and I buffed off all the orange on the needles. 
And I have to say, I think they look pretty good. I even went ahead and buffed off the rings and got rid of that flat black or that semi-gloss black that is on the ring. Just again, give it a more antique -y look. All right, so in order to install these gauges, we've already got a dash that's already has a couple of gauges installed in it. And before I just start drilling holes willy nilly, my wife has got one of those silhouette or cricket type machines. And if you have a, a somebody or you have access to one of those things, they are awesome because they allow you to lay out a dash with them before you even do anything and uh, kind of give you an idea of you know, where you can put gauges and where things are gonna fit. I went ahead and had her cut out some uh, two and a quarter inch circles for me, just out of some uh, craft paper. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and just stick them on this dash and see where we got room to put those, uh, the amp gauge and the temperature gauge. All right, so the reason that I went ahead and I buffed the paint off was because I want them to match the nickel plated or closely match the nickel plated antique gauges that are already here. So there's a uh, rim wound clock that's already installed and then there's a Stewart speedometer that's installed. And uh, after buffing the orange paint off and the uh, buffing the black paint off, I think they look like a pretty good match. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these two and a quarter inch circles I'm gonna find the center on them and then uh, put them up on the dash, just tape them up, and then we will drill the holes to put the, uh, the new amp gauge and install the new temperature gauge. It comes to deciding where these gauges go, uh, we have to pay attention to the fact that this dash has like a huge overhang before you can actually see the instrument panel. So one of the considerations that we have to do prior to installing these gauges is just like ergonomics. Uh, this has got a quite a big overhang where the top of the cowl uh, actually overhangs the instrument panel. Um, so with these little two inch circles, I can put them on the dashboard. I can see where they are going to be able to fit. So I should have no problem sticking two of them here and uh, making that work and just kind of put them in line with the other two gauges that are already in place. I'll probably end up sticking the ignition switch in this approximate location and then I will have the headlight switch in this location. These holes were already drilled and I don't know what they housed prior to but um, they're going to be they're going to be ignition switch and uh, headlight switch. So there's where I'm going to go ahead and put those two gauges. Um, I would, you know, truthfully, I'd like to put them closer to here, but just, it isn't going to work out. There's just not enough room and you can't see them. So we'll uh, go ahead and drill there. There's those gauges and uh, you know they don't look half bad still can go and adjust the carburetor so no no interference there but uh, they, they match up pretty good so with the black face and the white gauges and then having getting rid of that orange needle and just polishing it silver on both the water temp and the uh, amp gauge uh, it, it matches these old antique gauges much better than uh, it definitely did before so the water temp is, you know, from, from my perspective, the water temp is pretty difficult to see. Um, but luckily I think uh, Charlie is a little shorter than me, so that'll, that'll be better for him. But yeah, I like that. I think that looks really good. For a inexpensive gauge assembly, uh, you know, those Harbor Freight gauges really can't be beat. <laughs> it's a, Pretty good deal, 14 bucks, you get a temp gauge and an amp gauge, and uh, with a little bit of work, you can kind of fake them and make them look uh, a little bit more antique -y. All right, well, that wraps up the projects that I have scheduled for today. So uh, if you have any questions in regards to this car or any Model T questions in general, just uh, feel free to give me a shout, uh, comment down below. Uh, if you could, 
give this video a like and go ahead and subscribe because uh, that way you'll know about all the other cool stuff that I put out. Um, and plus it don't cost nothing. But uh, anyway, yeah, I appreciate you watching and I will catch you on the next one. Oh yeah, picked a good one there.